I wanted to bring up a movie uh, uh, that has gotten tremendous acclaim all year uh, uh, since, it, since it hit the festival circuit early in the year and now has been released on Netflix and is now considered a front, uh, you know, a, a possible Oscar nominee for Best Picture. But I just don't get it. The movie is, is, uh, is D. Rees' Mudbound. D. Ah, Rees... Okay. D. Rees did a movie a few years ago, ago called Pariah, which was uh, uh, quite, you know, it was okay. It was very art housey. But uh, um, this this movie, <clears throat> oh boy, what a! <laughs> I I'm just gonna read what I wrote about it in a <clears throat> in a little comment that I made on Facebook, which is kind of like a little mini review. Uh, well, uh, Mudbound is well-intentioned and handsomely photographed, but I also thought it was a soapy, predictable, and unrelentingly miserable affair. You uh, you know, it's funny, you rarely see these farmers, with quotations around it, farming in this movie. How is anyone making a penny off of these uh, unbelievably muddy fields? Everybody in it is a real sad sack. Uh, the woman who's played by uh, Carrie Mulligan is newly married to Jason Clark, uh, and yet, uh, you know, a blind bat can see she prefers the caddish younger brother to her kind of meathead, quasi decent husband. The younger brother is played by Garrett uh, Hed- Hedlund or something like that. Hed- um, Hedlund, Hedlund. Yeah, yeah Hedlund, yeah. Inside Lewin Davis, right? Inside right. Lewin Davis. Mm-hmm. Yeah. From Tron, I think. Um, <laughs> the mud is the big star of the movie, and I was kind of <laughs> sick of it. And all the newspaper shack walls about 40 minutes in. I was kind of like, oh, I got to get out of here. I got to get out of here or way before the beatings started. And uh, finally, when the racist assholes like old Jonathan Banks and a couple of fat bastards start showing up, uh, saying things like, you're in Mississippi now, boy, I felt like the movie was on fucking autopilot. Uh, You know, the black family who's all, you know, St. Lee's, Mary J. Blige uh, plays the mother. I forget the actor's name plays the dad. Uh, and of course, it's it's Jason Mitchell, who's probably the best thing in the movie, uh, as the son who goes away to war, um, comes back to Mississippi and is immediately harassed. And uh, I just knew that the black family is going to get a lot of misery, and the white family is going to be the cause of it. But everybody's going to remain all saintly and dignified, particularly the black characters. And the whites are going to be begrudgingly giving, I guess. And you know, meanwhile, the woman in the movie is really shoved into the background as kind of a prize for the Warring Brothers. And boy, does she have some real winners to choose from here—a drunken fool and a boring lunkhead. And the one character that I liked, Jason Mitchell, bears the brunt of most of the abuse in the film. And you can just see how it's going to go. It's. It's a more unrelentingly downbeat movie than even the vilified mother is. I mean, mother looks like a fucking fucking you know looks looks like a Rodgers and Hammerstein musical compared to this. Uh, I mean, I, you know, I loved Jason Mitchell. In I'd like it. to see that. <laughs> <laughs> that would be good. I loved Mitchell in it, and I did find the finale moving. But I honestly would not recommend this movie to anyone because I thought it was a deadly slog through the corn pun. That was it. I I, I don't see how uh, how this movie could get a Best Picture nomination, particularly given that it's a Netflix movie. What about that Mary J. Blige performance that everybody's talking about there? Uh well she I mean she doesn't have any makeup on actually, and she doesn't she doesn't actually, have her G- Gucci glasses and her and her earrings in but I mean she's she's actually she's, pretty good in the movie you um, I, I yeah but it's a nothing role I mean I didn't think it was much of a role she she doesn't I, have I, very I, many lines but it's the dad no, that's no, got the lines it's not it's not a bad movie I mean it reminded me it's like a, a southern how should I say it the southern take on Downton Abbey. Really? Um, what? Why? <laughs> How? <laughs> no, no, no. Because um, you're dealing with different. You're dealing with the. Or you have to look at it from a. How do I say this? Because they. Well, they're both the in the same class. 
sort of, but they both go, but you have the master, if you will, the master and the servant go fight in the war together. That's also one of the predominant storylines of Downton Abbey, where he oh, goes to fight in the Boer War, and then he comes back and he saves his life I, in World I War see, I. I get it. Okay. Yeah, so there's that rift on it. I'm not saying that's a dominant thing, but that's one of the things I liked about it. Um, that was the quite, only the only thing in it that's worthwhile is those scenes with Mitchell and Hedge, Headland together. Those mm-hmm. those are probably the good those are the only yeah, good scenes in the movie. I, that's the part of the movie I really responded to. I think they, I really everybody responded. else does too, but you have to like slog through an hour and a half of other shit in order to I think to, my problem with the movie my problem with the movie and I didn't let I mean I, I think I I liked it more than you, but I definitely I understand where you're coming from. You and he also got it. This is actually because I went to the Lincoln Plaza the other day. I watched it on Netflix, but you can go see this in the theaters if you live in New York. You can go to Lincoln Plaza and yeah. see this. Um, it's, I think my problem with the movie is it's sort of – it needs a little – they need to tighten it up a little bit in the first half because it's told in different you know, different points of view. That it's is almost so like true. A, it doesn't it's, get it doesn't, going until 50 minutes into the movie. Yeah, and, yeah it, because it, you, if, you're, if you didn't know any better, you think you're watching um, – um, William Faulkner's as they lay dying or something, which will be speaking of James Franco, he had made into one of the most confusing movies, confusing book into an even more confusing movie several years ago. But um, it does it has that mix kind of trying to change up the narratives, and I found that was my problem with the first half of the movie. I didn't know I all the narrators. I didn't understand what the what the I mean I understood what they were trying to do by doing that with the multiple narratives, but I thought it got very confusing in like twenty twenty to twenty to thirty minute mark. I was just like, wait a minute, guys, you you're getting I think you're you are getting you are overlapping things and but I do I do think the Jason Mitchell part, that part and especially going off to the war, I thought I responded to that very strongly. Mm. And I do wish that was more of the movie, but I do like it. I don't. I understand what you're saying, and you do wonder where it, because it's remember, this was the movie at Sundance earlier in the year that everyone was raving about. It broke um, records for for you know they they snatched it up quickly and paid top, top dollar for it. So I mean, I don't know. I, I just said uh, it's. I I don't see it. You know what I would say is, look, if you want to see a movie like this, go watch a good one. Go watch. Places in the Heart, Robert Benton's Places in the Heart. Mm. That's a much better movie. I mean, it's a you know, it's a, it's a tighter movie. It's a more moving right. film, and it basically covers the same kind of ground. And uh, you know, but uh, you know, I, I was thinking because it's, it's Netflix who bought it, so that I was wondering if maybe there was an opportunity to break the movie up maybe into two parts to have it maybe a parts one and two to go back into the editing room instead of maybe releasing it as a movie and trying to like break it up maybe into because it is Netflix and you could do that. You could get away with that on that platform. And that's how they they could have done whatever they wanted with it. Maybe made it into a two part, I thought. And yeah. Maybe played around with, you know, you know, it played around with the structure and maybe, um, and that would, I think help it. Um, yeah. I think I, that's just an idea. I think they're, I think they're the booking for awards. They want they they want to break the the they want to break the uh, the Oscar ceiling is what well, they want to do. Well, they have the other movie. They have the Angelina Jolie movie in the foreign film cat that they're trying to, to get. Yes. yes. So they do have that movie. Yeah, that's I don't know interesting. What I, Angelina Jolie might win best foreign film this year. How weird is that? Yeah, that is that is that is weird. Yeah.